As a young man, he was trained at the very start to center his affections on one person and only that person, his prospective wife, a woman he would not meet for some years. He was taught the all-important phrases such as, I love you, sweet baby, darling, and that is fantastic. This developed a certain preoccupation within his heart, to meet the woman and give her what he was molded to. His eyes were quiet and still as he searched for her unknown face. It got to such a point that he went insane from not meeting her. He had all this love that he had given to no one, kept aside for something that was increasingly becoming a fantasy. And so, the Darwin Syndrome came to pass, and he was just another case study. To secure his identity and personal security, his name was taken away, and with it, all traces of his personality. It was there in the ward, section 6, that he would meet her. She too had suffered a breakdown of sorts, and they were the ideal matchup. More later. Her syndrome was classified as needing a new prefix central reality man disempowerment. She was brought up the way most girls were brought up, sexually abused and dressed in Barbie doll ways. Who could ask for anything more? Their love affair started the way a common we yell at horses carrying the ways and means of any given situation. It burned brightly within the confines of the war. Section 6 has the most dangerous, the challengingly rational, the ultimately beautiful, in order to keep them protected from themselves, although not necessarily protected from society. Many institutions work like this. It's called building a better pathway to a brighter future. He and she fell in love the very first day they met and bonded like molecular cells will later that evening. No one kept track of the sexual politics in the ward, and so their relationship was destined to succeed. The two plotted to escape the ward together and develop new prosecutions to attack the completists with. They wore name tags with red lipstick smeared on in a way that you can almost tell what their economic beliefs were when any sense of their identity was lost by the compounds mixing into the alcoholic system of a darker man's delirium. The two held hands and walked down the hallway to what they thought was an exit and asked each other the eternal question within all men's hearts. What are you, some kind of freak? Thank you.